everyone. So this is it. We're here. 13 games left. Uh, we're going to see how serious this Lakers team is. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not saying that they're going to go 13-0, and 0 and it's like, I mean, I would love that. <laughs> then you'd, You could definitely say this team is serious. But realistically, you're going to lose a couple games, which is fine. But what does it look like? Do the Lakers go 10 and 3 like we desperately need them to? If they go 10 and 3, I think that they have a real shot anywhere from that 8 to 6. Uh, Because all the teams that are ahead of us, it does get kind of complicated, it does get kind of tough, but a lot of them play each other still, uh, and in some cases, multiple times, and somebody's got to win those games. All right. So the Lakers, if they handle their business because they can't control those other teams. Right, they can't control how many losses those other teams have. But just like the Lakers are going to lose some games, those other teams are going to lose some games. So the Lakers, if they can, buckle down, get serious, get for real, quit messing around, playing games, and knock off this inconsistencies of one game there's effort, the next game there's not, the next game there's this, the next game there's that, do what you're supposed to do. Play the right way. Hey, right? The Atlanta win was great. Not because it was Atlanta, right? Atlanta is just Atlanta, right? It was how the Lakers won. Sharing the basketball, hitting shots, playing defense, right? Taking care of the basketball. They only had eight turnovers, 39 assists. It, the doing and playing the right way. No sticky fingers, ball's not sticking. Austin Reeves was even serviceable defensively in that game. Right? Like Those are the things that we need to see from the Lakers on a regular basis. To see, again, how serious is this team? How much does this team really want it? You keep hearing, oh, this team wants it. Well, let's show us. LeBron James and Anthony Davis really set the tone, in my opinion, in that Atlanta game. I believe that they're going to need to do that the rest of the way. Get LeBron. I mean, obviously, LeBron, you could give somebody a couple shots. Like, let's say D'Lo goes three for three. All right? Uh, okay, fine. Then let, let's see if he can keep cooking and everyone else cook. But, like, you know... I would rather see LeBron and AD approach these next 13 games the way we saw with the Atlanta game, where it's like, we're just going to score and you're not going to stop us. And they just dominated. And then that got everyone else going. That got everyone else motivated. That got everyone else charged. And then they started going. And then D'Lo hitting six threes. And that's what we need to see, in my opinion. I think LeBron James and Anthony Davis need to be the tone setters. LeBron likes to get everyone else going early and kind of trickle his points in throughout. I don't think LeBron can do that. I don't. I don't think uh, right now, I don't think, I think, I'm not saying he has to go and drop 30 in, in the first, but, you know, first cup, go ahead, pass it up, first couple possessions, but all of a sudden, if it's like eight to two or something, put your head down and go get four to six straight points. Now, and again, I'm not, you don't need a ton, just enough to kind of get everyone going, get a nice highlight dunk. Now everyone's pumped up. Now the crowd's pumped up. It just, it changes the dynamic of the game. But look, we, offensively, we've been excellent. Defensively, we've been atrocious. In general, this team, part of it is just, you know, you're, you're missing your defensive pieces. That's why you don't really have a defensive identity. But 27th, in defense, that's just, this is just inexcusable. With Anthony Davis, especially your 27th, Lakers got basically four days rest in between games. Good. Now your body should be energized, should be refreshed, right? LeBron was dealing with little nagging injuries and then that ankle injury. You know, other guys are all dealing with little nagging injuries. Anthony Davis, he getting elbowed in the eye, all that. Okay, well, now you had time to kind of clear that up. Now you had time to heal. Let's get into the, let's get into to action here. Let's start running away with some wins. Let's start rattling off and doing the things that we are supposed to do and handle it the right way. Got to build some momentum getting into that into that play in, and hopefully the playoffs. Now, if you're just kind of straggling along, doesn't bode well. But in injury news, got some injury news. Jared Vanderbilt, according to Jovan Buha, Jared Vanderbilt is, uh, or the Lakers are optimistic uh, that he will return before the April 14th final game. That would be huge for us. More than anybody, we need Jared Vanderbilt, like badly. 
He's, I mean, he's by far our best defensive player, not named Anthony Davis. And him alongside Anthony Davis make us, just those two guys alone, make us a top 10 defense, which is pretty remarkable. But it's just because Jared Vanderbilt makes up so much ground, so much ground. Jared Vanderbilt is teleporting all over the court like he's Goku. It's unbelievable. And you add, you pair him next to the best defense player in the league in Anthony Davis, it's like, good luck. And he just makes up for so many of the flaws. And then his ability to help and impact on both sides of the basketball, yes, both sides. One, the Lakers are making him very serviceable on the offensive side. It's the, it's the offense they're running. They're running in the five-out offense. A lot of movement, a lot of action. Um, you know, so they were basically putting Jared Vanderbilt as Vanderbilt as the screener, uh, really opened up for him. Uh, on top of that, you have him and his ability to rebound on the defensive side of things. Guess what? That gets the Lakers a possession and another offensive opportunity. Offensive rebounds gets the Lakers another possession and another offensive opportunity getting steals, right? Whether it's uh, live ball steals or not. Right? Either one, well, one leads to transition. The other one still gets you another offensive possession in which you could go and score the basketball. And then just the defense. If Jared Vanderbilt gets a stop and somebody else gets the rebound, well, guess what? Jared Vanderbilt just helped create another offensive possession. So he does help and impact our offense. Uh, and then the defense side and the rebounding. And just to give us some athleticism, a point of attack guy, a true defender out on the perimeter, Something that the Lakers just, they need, and they need it badly. Um, so hopefully he can come back. I, we need him back. Obviously, I'll take him back whenever. I mean, even if it's going into the uh, play-in tournament, right? But I'd like him back, ideally, with a handful of games left. If he could come back, like, the first or second game of April, that'd be perfect. So that way he has, like, five to seven games to kind of get himself right. And, and kind of get his timing down, get his, you know, his legs under him. Because uh, we saw last time, it took him like 10 games really to get into the flow of things, which is understandable. Again, there's more to defense than just standing in front of a guy and making sure you don't get blown by, right? Like, it's being able to move your feet. It's timing. It's the adjustments and understanding, being able to fight through screens. And it's just, there's a lot that goes into it. So hopefully Jared Vanderbilt can be back in that return. As far as uh, Christian Wood, Christian Wood, he's very likely done, it, depending on where the Lakers go, right? If they, say, go to the second round of the playoffs, then we could see Christian Wood uh, lace up again for the Lakers. Otherwise, uh, don't count on it. Gabe Benson is still expected to return at some point. Uh, he has made it, he, he's determined himself to get on the basketball court. Like So he's he's been very adamant about, no, I need to get back ASAP. So if we can start getting our defensive pieces back, that's going to be huge because then maybe we can start getting together some form of a defensive identity going into the play-in and then the playoffs, right? Again, we've been excellent offensively. Defensively has been a real problem. And a lot of that is, a lot of it is, effort, is lack of effort, but a lot of it is also just we're missing our top four defensive guys. Um, but as far as the game today goes, Torian Prince is out for personal reasons. I know some people don't care. Some people are probably jumping up and down going, yay. But in reality, um, I understand Torian Prince has a bad taste in a lot of Laker fans' mouths because of Darvin Ham. But Torian Prince is still a solid player for us. He's been one of our better three-point shooters all season. He's a veteran. He, he makes solid plays from time to time. He's done a better job of not settling. Right? He's a guy that has hit some real impact shots this season, man. He's hit some huge shots, like, sprinkled throughout. I'm not talking about, like, one game here and there. I mean, it's a lot of the stuff that Dorian Prince does on that basketball court go unnoticed. But the problem is that he shouldn't be playing 30 minutes, and he played 30 minutes for a large majority of the season, so people... Don't really aren't really paying attention to him. They're just talking about him, or they're just looking for the wrong rather than the right, right? It's like, which I get it. I get it to an extent. But Torian Prince is a guy that we could use. Luckily, it's not like an injury or anything. It's it's a personal matter. Um, Cam Reddish is back. That's good. Uh, now again, start getting our defense pieces back. Start getting our size back. You got Max Christie, which I expect to play more minutes, especially with Torian Prince being out. Cam Reddish. 
We're going to need him probably playing more minutes, especially with um, Tyrese Maxey and, you know, even Tobias Harris, if he starts cooking, throw multiple bodies, throw multiple lengths, looks, all that stuff. Uh, so Cam Reddish back, Max Christie back, two of our four key defensive guys. Torian Prince is out, but he should be back um, sooner rather than later. Nothing significant, just personal stuff. This game, Lakers can't mess around. Got to win this game. You just, you don't have, we have very few games that we can afford to lose. Like, in reality, we could probably only lose three, maybe four games. But I think it's probably closer to three than it is four if we want to get out of this. Again, a lot of those teams have tough schedules coming up. A lot of those teams play each other that are ahead of us. But you still have teams like Houston, Golden State that are right on our tail. Um... I, I'm I, I'm not worried about Houston yet, but they are on a seven game win streak, and if that keeps going, and Lakers go on a losing streak, all of a sudden, uh, but again, if you do your job, you can't control other teams, you can't control what other teams win or lose, but you can control you. In my opinion, the Lakers control their destiny. They win enough games, right? Because other teams are going to lose, and again, these teams play each other. Lakers hold the card. You win enough games to overtake these guys, guess what? You're gonna you'll be in. Because all these teams aren't gonna go undefeated. I'm not saying the Lakers do either, but it depends on uh, you know, what do they lose? One, two, three, seven? <laughs> you know, like you look at a team like Phoenix, they probably go maybe five hundred the rest of the way. We'll see how it goes with the the Spurs games coming up. And I know you might think like, oh, Phoenix is just going to run through San Antonio. San Antonio is 2-0 and against Phoenix this season. Something to keep in mind. But um, anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Pass question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Um, you excited that uh, guys start to come back? Uh, you excited for these final 13 games of the stretch? What do you think the Lakers finish with? What do you think the record is, if you had to guess? Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. And that subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.